stand up here and say a few words about a guy, or I guess you could describe as the strong thumb. Get the lower. And about a girl who's also strong, although she's definitely not silent. <laughs> My good friend Paul and Darlene Kidder. Ladies and gentlemen, the year was 1968. Brendan Johnson was in office. The Green Bay Packers won Super Bowl number two, and the Frank Burr, she won double. And Silly Joe. Most importantly, Paul Joseph Kidder was born on April 10th, 1968. Six days after the assassination of Martin Luther King. Paul had nothing to do with that. Five years later, in 1973, five years. Five years. The New York Mets losing the World Series had the price of gasoline being 39 cents a gallon. But it was also the year that Darlene, G.I. Jane Cole, a girl who could bench press probably more than most of the guys in this room, entered the World Series. Here's the same day, the New York Mets had their 15 on Peak Street come to an end with a loss. Keep that price. Darlene had nothing to do with that. In 1976, <laughs> a new car was priced at $5,414, and then the wage was $2.30 an hour, and people were flocking to the box office to see the award-winning film Rocky. It was also the year that I changed my life. It was the year Paul Kidder and I met Miss Matthews third grade class. It was the year that Paul and I were able to have a lot of fun. It was the third grade that I was thinking where Paul and I were able to have a lot of fun. It was the third grade that I was thinking where Paul and I were able to have a lot of fun. It was the third grade that I was thinking where Paul and I were able to have a lot of fun. Throughout junior high school, Paul and I remained good friends. I remember running for the student council presidency with the help of Paul Kinnon and Peter Jones as my campaign manager slash ballot box stuffers for the rest of the victory. Summer nights were spent playing handball down the school, racing motorcycles, joy riding in this kid's free Granada. Sorry, Miss Kidd. <laughs> Hanging out at a place we call the Rock. Our high school years came to win. Gods were parachute pants. The artist formerly known as Prince was known as Chris. Mary Schuler had his day off, although Paul didn't. He spent his time working the 23 shop, playing the drums, kicking a hacky sack, and driving around the ring with about I 10 of the hacky sack before that. <laughs> In 1985, we all still hung out in that lot, although we moved up in the world. We started hanging out at a place we call the Fort, which was actually built in the woods of Judy's Benjamin's backyard. <laughs> Those were the 1980s. That's very good. Very good. A couple of years after high school, you're like a professional speaker. The two guys I know shared a place over in Lincoln Park. Pete <laughs> Johnson and Paul Kibbett moved in. <laughs> And in that small apartment, there was a lot of chaos. In 1994, Paul was at a Super Bowl party watching the Dallas Cowboys beat up on the Buffalo Bills. And on that night, only known to him, his life would take turn for the best. He would meet the girl, he would fall in love with her. A month later, on St. Valentine's Day, Paul picked up on me and his great and they set their first date at the Elvis Italian restaurant. Paul had the deal. Darlene had the chicken, and Darlene actually ate dessert. She ate dessert. She ate dessert. She ate dessert. After a couple of years of dating, trips down the shore, the Disney World of Key West, Paul shocked all of us and proposed to Darlene as my clock struck midnight. And the calendar year changed from 1997 to 1998. And finally, that is the supper tonight. Oh, Paul, <laughs> ever since I've known you, girls are always hitting on you. And as time is all of it, I'm leaving my jealous. But I even start to wonder a little bit about it. Not that it's at all. But I realize, I realize something, that Paul was waiting for something. The good things in his life are always worth waiting for. And Paul was waiting for the best thing that's ever happened to one another right here. I mean, you guys make a great couple. Paul, you do what you gotta do. Darlene, you do what you gotta do. And even once in a while, they do it together. <laughs> what do you say? Ladies and gentlemen, let's raise your glasses. It's time for a talk. Raise them up, everybody. So Paul and Darlene, to health, to wealth, to happiness. Well, cheers, guys. I love you. <laughs> Thank you.
Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause.